All right. Hello and welcome back to the Cup Chasers podcast. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. It's the end of season review for the Arsenal. A second place finish. Lots and lots of progress. And if you are as happy as I am with the season, go ahead and smash the likes. Subscribe to the channel and get that notification bell on. We definitely got plenty more coming for you. Well, overall, I think that... uh, there are a ton of positives in this season. I think going 8th, 8th, 5th, 5th, 2nd is uh, is pretty huge. Um, I think it was uh, a really bright start to the summer. We had a fantastic preseason, uh, especially after the end of last season was just awful. And the the mood was uh, in the dumps, really. And we got going quick last summer. Got uh, the preseason went really well. Uh, that did include a four niller over Chelsea, if I remember correctly, uh, which was uh, it's always good to see, even though it was a preseason game. And then we won the first five games of the season. Uh, I remember a lot of people saying that that Crystal Palace away match to open the season could be difficult. And uh, from the word go, from the first game, I thought Arsenal kind of laid down a marker and were like, look, we are going to be a force this season. And uh, and we were right out of the gate. Even the even the game at Old Trafford, I thought we were better, thought we were the better team. And then the referees did Old Trafford things and kind of uh, kind of changed the game a little bit. But, um, you know, as far as uh, we, we could probably do a whole nother video on the referees uh, this season. I think we might just do that later on. So I'll I'll leave the referees uh, for now. Um, but I think that we can start with William Saliba coming into the team, had a fantastic year last season in Liga and then comes back to Arsenal and was a humongous difference maker. Um, I thought that, you know, I didn't even know who he was when he come back to the to the team. And the difference he's made has been immense. Uh, in fact, we are trying to get him uh, to sign another contract, and we have been for some time, but his wage demands are quite high. And so they're trying to like negotiate with him. And I'm like, don't negotiate with this man. Pay him. Pay the man his money because he deserves it. He's been amazing this season. Uh, and I, I arguably, agree. arguably the reason his injury could be the reason we didn't see it out. I 100% um, believe that. But it'd be on the shadow out, of a doubt. Yeah, he went out in the Europa League game, the second leg where we lost in penalties and did not play another game all season, and it showed. I think it definitely showed. But Arteta's willingness to uh, kind of take what he's learned from Pep and kind of start doing some of the same things City are doing, there's very uh, there's def- definite similarities in this season's Arsenal to what City tried to do, what Pep's tried to do. Um, And I think that um, the inverted role that he had Zinchenko doing, I mean, and to bring Zinchenko and Jesus in the summer was incredible. Uh, I was very excited about that. And to recognize that we can at least, you know, you know, imitation, they say, is the purest form of flattery. And so, you know, we're trying to kind of do some of the same things City are doing and having that experience with them. I thought Zinchenko had a great season. I think at times he definitely, his defensive frailties definitely kind of came through. Uh, We can highlight the Liverpool game, um, which, I mean, he he had one moment in that game. And I think it's a little unfair to kind of just throw that on him you know, one poor moment, and sure, it cost us the point, uh, cost us two points. And personally, I think that that was where it kind of went wrong. That was kind of where the league 
I mean, statistically, it's definitely where the league got away from us um, as far as the points go, because if we if we would have won out after that, we still would have lost on goal difference. So <clears throat> I think it's too much to put on him uh, as far as, you know, the way the league ended. But I thought Zinchenko had a great season, and uh, I'm looking forward to what he can do again next season. Um, Gabrielle deserves a shout as well. Fantastic. Played most of the games. I think he played most of the games, uh, as far as even in Europa league, he played a lot, played a lot in the, the league cup and the FA cup as well. Um, I know he played at least 35 or 36 of the premier league games. Uh, and so an absolute stalwart back there. Obviously, he had his moments um, of frailty. Every, you know, we we gave up too many goals. I think this season, um, especially if you're going to be a champion, I think our defense at home. Um, and I think it was mentioned once uh, in obviously in one of our pods about how, um, you know. We like to be open. We like to really go at teams at home. And so we were le- kind of leaking goals, uh, you know, for a spell there. Um, like, for example, we beat Fulham 2-1 at home. We beat Villa 2-1 at home. We beat Tottenham 3-1 at home. We beat Liverpool 3-2 at home. You know, we gave uh, we, we're, we're given lots of goals at home which was a definite issue. Um, And so I think that there are uh, plenty of things to work on moving forward, but I think our record versus the big teams this season was, was much, much improved. I think if you look back at uh, Arsenal and the end of Wenger's, years you can say that we did good against teams that we should beat um but we never really could hang with the big six so to speak over the years for example we didn't beat tottenham uh away from home until this season uh, you know, in their new in their new seat stadium we we had not won until this season so that was a a big box to check. Um, you know, we hadn't beaten Liverpool in who knows how long, and we took four points off of them this season. Um, we, you know, have we broke some kind of we broke. I definitely, I'm not sure what the record was or who had it before, but we did not lose to a London team this season. I think we I think there was a we broke a record for being undefeated in London derbies uh this wow. season which nice. again is a huge improvement um and I think that if you look at you know <clears throat> the way that we performed against some of the bigger clubs um took 4 points off of Newcastle who finished fourth, three off of United, six off of Chelsea, four off of Liverpool, um, six off of Tottenham. It's the first time we've done the double over Tottenham in a while. Um, I think that is something that is going to have to continue. That's a huge part of uh, why, you know, we kind of had a little had a little bit of a fear factor at times this season, you know, People will, people, uh, you know, like right there in the middle of the season, people were sitting back kind of afraid. And uh, there was a little bit of criticism, sure, that we couldn't break down a low block. And uh, I remember long stretches of games this season where I was like, man, this is looking, you know, like, for example, Bournemouth scored immediately. One of the fastest goals in Premier League history. And then we couldn't couldn't break them down at all for 60 minutes, and they scored again. 
you know, and at that moment, I still remember I was like, this isn't happening. Like this, I still remember that game vividly, obviously. Uh, and I was like, that we're not losing to Bournemouth, are we? We're not going to lose at home to Bournemouth. Really? And so there was a bit of a, an element of disbelief about it for me. And so I kind of in the back of my mind was like, we're going to pull this out. We're going to we're going to bring this back. I obviously did not you know expect it to be in such a spectacular fantastical fashion. Uh and if you guys remember that was the one moment this season I was that I was so jacked that I texted to the group that we were going to win the league. If you recall, that was the only moment all season long where I was like so yeah. out of <laughs> that the youngster, the 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 guy from the academy, it's his we first all goal for the that. club, right? Huh? Was that that was his first goal for the club, right? No, 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 oh, no, no. Okay, okay. No, it might have been his first Premier League goal this season. Okay, but uh, he was clutch. He had some good goals in the Europa League this season in this group stage. Reese Nelson did. And uh, comes in, changes the game, scores. I mean, how is that not Arsenal's goal of the season? <laughs> you know, like it was. I mean, as far as like quality and and how spectacular. You know, we we had some. We've scored some really good goals this season. But as far as like the moment, you know, and what fans were feeling, what I was feeling in that moment, yeah, that was. Uh, that was huge. I definitely think that that has to be goal of the season. Um, and I think that, you know, there's plenty of players we can we can talk about. I think Arteta's work with Granite Xhaka this season uh, is an incredible turnaround. You guys know I, I definitely was in the Xhaka out category for a while. For a long time. <laughs> there was a spell there couple seasons ago where in the really dark days where I was even not, I was doubting Arteta, you know, and uh, I think that this whole trust the process thing has finally come around and um, we're going to be a force to be reckoned with for, for a few seasons now uh, for sure. Especially if we can, you know, if we can attract names. I mean, if we bag Rice and Caicedo. We got Caicedo. <laughs> Ooh, that's going to be, that's going to be, you know, imagine Declan Rice, Moises Casado, and Martin Odegaard as our three in the midfield next season. Uh, you know, I'm already picturing it with a big old smile, you know, and um, I will say that it's disappointing the way we approached the Cups this season. We were only in the League Cup for one game against Brighton, and we filled it a real weekend squad and took a 3-1 at home. Um, pretty sure Fabio Vieira started and Odegaard was on the bench, which is probably the sole reason we didn't do much, because we turn around a month and a half later and go to the Amex and win 4-2 on uh, New Year's Eve. So, you know, it was clear that we didn't take the League Cup seriously. And I get that. You know, that wasn't a big deal to me. Um, then we get Oxford in the FA Cup. And Fabio Vieira has his only good game of the season. I'll give him that. He hit the he hits the the free kick that we scored our opening goal on. And this is where I realized that he needs a confidence boost to get into games. He after he hit that free kick and we scored the goal. He was decent for the rest of that game. And it's probably the best game I've seen him play. But then, of course, the nightmare draw for the fourth round of the FA Cup. Could not have drawn a worse team. And, uh, again, played a week inside. And that might have been – it sucks to say this, but – the FA Cup game versus Manchester City might have been where we were best in those three games. The best of those three games for Arsenal. And it was it was a weekend half team. Um, 
And I mean, if you remember that game, Lewis, City did not play a weekend squad. Nope. It was most of the starters. Yep. That was the Ake goal game, right? The Ake yep. goal won the game. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we crashed out there. I thought they really gave it a go, though, in that game. And from there, I mean, that was literally right after we'd drawn Newcastle, beaten Tottenham away, and then beaten Man United at home with Eddie and Ketia's, you, you know, last second winner, um, which another moment in the season where I was absolutely jacked. Just, oh, I was, oh, I was freaking out. Um, because like you, X, I, I just cannot stay in Manchester United. Just, no, I'm no. just. I can't, I can't, I can't do it. It goes I mean, back like, long it's ago. Just, it's it's just, in. yeah, exact, bro. Yeah, I don't want to hear, oh, nine. It's just stuck in there how much I hate Man United. Burns you know? So me. I was pumped for that. Yeah, same. I was pumped for that uh, for sure. Um, disappointing, definitely the, our games versus city, especially with all the hype surrounding them. Um, you could definitely tell that city took us seriously, which is not, that's new. That's progress. Uh, we normally get swept aside when we play city and, uh, we did again. I thought in the last game in the, in the four one, we definitely got swept aside, but that was not because we were like awful and granted we weren't great but the way city played has made us look awful um and in the first time the, the in this the middle game the one at the emirates i thought we were great just horrible mistakes and man city are lethal as we know like but, uh, yeah absolutely but we bounced back after that and uh had the game against the away game versus villa where Jorginho scores and it the ball hits Martinez in the back of that. You know, that that that's got a shout for goal this season, too. Just for, you know, pure, pure like spite out of the way Martinez is. It's like, you know what? You you, you kind of deserve to have the ball hit off your head and go in the goal, uh, you know, for that one. Um, but the way we went out of Europa League was just it's disheartening, you know. It's right. disheartening for me that we didn't take that competition seriously. I think that might be the biggest, uh, obviously not the biggest disappointment of, of the season, uh, but one of, for me, one of my personal bigger disappointments of the season, because we could have won that. We, we, we could have won that whole thing. For sure. Um, I know it's the Sevilla Invitational, and we would have had to get through them. Nobody gets through Sevilla in the Europa League. I get that. But uh, I think Arsenal could have won, could have won that for sure. Um, and then came the run in that that did us in. Um, it feels bad that Liverpool game that we kind of sat off. Um, but Lewis, you've said it. City were just in our heads for so long. They were just in our heads for so long. Yeah. Um, we knew by the time we went to Anfield that we'd have to that we we pretty much had to win out from there. Um, if we wanted to be able to lose to City and still win the league, we had to win out from there out, uh, and uh, just kind of fell short. And I think in the West Ham game. You know, it was already, it was kind of already gone. Saka misses the penalty, and, you know, that kind of, you know, we should have won that, we should have won that game. We should have beat West Ham, you know, and there there are moments in the season, you know, the Southampton game was just, what, I mean, I don't even, I don't even know what to say about the Southampton game. We just, usually we started quickly this season. Yeah. You know, we started us, out with bang, and then we give two goals in the first 17 minutes and have to fight back again. And it's and then the very next game is City. You know, I just think City were in our heads for too long. It's crazy to me though because we turn around right after that. We beat Chelsea three one at home, um, 
and then go to Newcastle and have one of the performances of the season. And that was the last time we wanted to play. <laughs> Took your vacation. Yeah, you know, we didn't show up at home versus Brighton. We didn't show up to Forest. I think we were just trying to keep them in the league. I guess Arteta was doing <laughs> super a favor. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then when there's no pressure, when when everything's done, we smashed Wolves on the last day. I think we always do good on the last day when it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, you know, we beat Everton 5-1 last season at the at the end of this season, you know. So um I think all in all for me, you know, Saka had a wonderful season. Uh, Martinelli had a great season. Um, I loved Gabriel Jesus. You know, who would who knows where we, you know, what would have happened if he was healthy all season long. Oh, yeah. Um, but the man that deserves all the praise. Okay, and you know, and I'll, I'll shout out Thomas Partey as well. He's uh, he's definitely was uh, huge this season. Ben White was huge this season. But the man that deserves all of it, MVP for me of the entire season, Martin Odegaard. Just if you didn't, if you didn't know about him before this season, now you know. You know now you know he he's an absolute, uh, you know, just I mean he's a maestro, I guess you could say. He he he's so good on the ball uh, when he's on his day, you know. For me, it's only KDB that's better than him, you know, on, on his on his day as far as controlling games, as far as, you know, picking the pass, as far as finding the proper ball at the proper moment, you know. Um, and he scored double-digit goals as well this season. He did season. score some really good goals this season. You know, so... Um, he did score some really good goals this season. Yeah, you look at you look at the front four, and we had double double digits on all... And, and goals for the front four. Um, we got a couple of couple of names on the assist list as well, you know. So I think all in all, this season shows that when we're firing on, on all cylinders, you know, there's only one team better. <laughs> there's only one team better, and yeah, it obviously obviously hurts my heart that we weren't able to see it out. Um, and uh, the wait goes on. But uh, I think, Lewis, you mentioned giving a grade to the season. Um, you know, I feel there's so many positives. There's so many good things that came out of this season uh, that, you know, I'm, I'm still I'm still giving it giving it an A, you know, uh, you know, low 90s, middle middle 90s percentile on your hundred you know, if, if your hundred is the the score we're going on, you know, I'm still giving us a 94, 95 um, for some of the things we've achieved. You know, biggest disappointments, obviously, the cups. We just didn't take them seriously, right? You yeah. know, you could you could tell from the lineups. You know, the thing is to, to chime in on that. I would say I give them an A minus, but that's where the minus comes from. And the reason I say that is. And, and you know, I mean, well, Harry Kane knows, too, is if you get a chance to win a cup, you go win it. And there's no cup. I don't get it. And the funny thing is, this is where you have to give United credit, because even though they didn't, no one really took the Carabao Cup seriously. They saw a cup. They took advantage of it. And even though in terms of history, FC was United season a success, they'll probably say no, even though they qualify for champs and they won a cup. But. Any other team in the top six would have traded seasons with them like that, like that. And so I look at it and I say, you know, that, that was a big flaw for not taking the cup seriously for the following reason. One, I, I feel confident they would have won the Europa League. So th no team that was in the final was better than them. No, they were better than Roma. They were better than they're Leverkusen better than to get there. They are better than Sevilla to get there. So they could have won that. Better than Saul, yeah. If they took the um the the League Cup series, United weren't better than them. They could have beat them there too. Yeah. So that's so that's two cups that were available that would have propelled you. And, and it's different because yeah, you know, we we you don't want to lose, right? But your losses have to be strategic. 
if you take an L, you want the L to be somewhere where it doesn't hurt you and it wakes you up, right? And so their losses, and, and you know, the FA Cup won. I, I, I didn't say the FA Cup because the reason City took the FA Cup series is because of where Arsenal was at that point in the season. They're like, look, City was like, you know what? We don't know if we're going to catch them, so we're going to punch them in the face for this one if this is the only cup available to us. Yep. And so they went for what was available. And, and, and unfortunately, and you saw, you saw some of the narrative, and it was a little bit of chirping, like, quiet, like, Matt Church Mouse whispering uh, of the confidence that Arsenal had at that point in the season where they were just like, well, we're just going to focus on the league because we're going to win that. It, it's a marathon, man. You catch a cramp, it's over. It's over. You, you, you go to the checkpoints and you get your cup of water and you throw it down your throat and you drink <laughs> along the way because if you don't right. dehydrate at the end, then you're going to be like, but, but you win what's available. You know, and, and it, it's, it's disappointing because I really thought, and you, we, we can go back in the pods. I swear, I remember saying, I thought Arsenal will win Europa League. I thought they would have won the, the thing. I thought they were the favorites. And we all they, agree with that. And they didn't they didn't take the League Cup seriously at all. I bet they take them all serious next year. Oh. I bet they take every single one of them seriously. Yeah. Oh yeah. You better believe that we're not playing Fabio Vieira in the Champions League. I'll be writing a strongly worded letter. At least letter. you hope not, You're right? <laughs> I'm writing a strongly worded letter. Yeah, no, that's, that's that's Arteta's blind spot. I agree that Odegaard was the player of the season and he's the only one behind uh, 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 De Bruyne. Even though I, I will say this is he has a level that is beyond what he's shown because Real Madrid saw him and he was there. So there's even more in his in his bag. And, you know, while I don't necessarily want him to pull out that bag while, you know, City is in their ascendancy. It's nice to see players, you know, get better. And, and like Sokka is another one where I really hope that, you know, he can like. Keep going. Yeah, you know, because he's. he's his prime's not at 23. Difficult right? crap. And I saw like the top 10 valued guys. And I think he's like number seven or eight or something. He's like in the middle not where they have valued more than Mbappe, which. I, I don't agree with that. But the FA tax. But I, I also see he, he's a good player. He's a top ten young player in the world and he deserves he's a future star, right? So I, I do wish to, that he continues to ascend, but uh Arteta the the the, the and I th- I think Jake you said it best, his stubbornness and his being set in ways and arrogance. I hope he sees the corrections on that. You know, just just so the team can maximize, because if he doesn't, if he doesn't, then as much rope they, as they've given him, they'll Arsenal is a big enough club where they'll they'll attract somebody else. Yep. We I'm can't feel confident and lazy because I, I bet even I don't know if it's if he would an Ancelotti would slot right in there and win right away. Right away, he'd win right away. I mean, you can say, okay, Ancelotti made mistakes at Real Madrid against City. You stick Ancel- Ancelotti wins. Conte yeah. wins. You, you can get any of those guys, you stick them in that Arsenal team, and that's not the slight Arteta, but those guys win with them. They win with those guys, period. Yeah. 